Alexis and I have been dealing with a lot of stress because of her parents. Oh, Alexis, are you thinking about me? I got my mind wrapped around you like a car on a tree. Hi, I'm Peter Knett with Daily Extra, and I'm here with Elvira Lind and Ryan Casada, the subject and filmmaker um, of Songs for Alexis. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so maybe just to start off, Ryan, how about you just talk a little bit about yourself and, and your story and, and your, your work as a musician? I started playing music when I was six years old, and I started writing songs when I was about 12, and then I just started performing when I was 14. I just wanted to get my songs out there. And I'm also a motivational speaker, so I go into high schools and colleges and educate them about the trans community and just try to open some more minds so um, people aren't as bullied as much. So. so your parents don't want you to see me. I want to be your boyfriend. I can see my old sin. Dad said that I was no longer considered his daughter. It's like, I don't know how you expect me to just forget that that happened. And it's incredibly wonderful that at such a young age you have the confidence and ambition to be a spokesperson um, for you know a cause and maybe talk a little bit about your experiences doing that and, and how you evolved into becoming you know s such a great um, representation of, of the trans community. Thank you. Um, really the, the trans activism is something I just fell into. I never pictured myself doing this but when I went on Larry King and Tyra Banks I realized I need to go on these shows because another youth needs to see me on these shows because when I was growing up I was so alone there was no one I could look up to that was trans you know yeah. and that really affected me and I wanted to give youth someone to look up to or someone that they could relate to so that they wouldn't feel alone I mean the reason why I do it all is just to to give people another chance at life like it's not fair that the trans community is so bullied and oppressed and I don't want people to feel the same pain that I felt growing up. And this film is such a beautiful way of, of getting your story out into the world. Um, let's talk a little bit about the film and, and sort of um, what the story you were trying to tell with that film. I was doing some research on, on actually something else and I, and I came across the, all the different video blogs on YouTube where really, really young FGMs was blogging to each other about the transitioning they were going through and I just thought it was really quite extraordinary and it reminded me of like the phone lines you could phone in the, when I was <laughs> age or younger <laughs> it was like in the library there was like you can phone someone yeah. if you feel lonely and I was like it's amazing you know it's a phone line and it was such a good idea and now we have the internet and it's such a it's just an incredible tool. I set out to make a story that was focusing very much about um, young people in their in their rooms confiding to each other and then it ended up becoming a lot about family and dynamics and actually becoming a love story. So it, I was as surprised <laughs> when it sort of just changed, but it, I think it, that was the right way. Clearly you guys get along really well. I mean, and how did, you, how did you guys come to form the relationship where you could clearly trust her so much to, to let her tell your story in such a beautiful way? There wasn't ever a moment that my family couldn't trust Elvira. We just clicked right away and we felt comfortable. All of us felt really comfortable together. And I think that has a lot to do with Elvira's personality. I know like a lot of other films and like TV things that I've been a part of, it's really pushy and they don't know when to stop filming if something is like getting really hectic and they kind of like force your story out and, and it, it makes you uncomfortable. But Elvira never did that. When there were moments where we didn't want to be filmed, she was really like respectful about that and she recognized it on her own. So that's like, I mean, that's the quality of person that, that just makes a good filmmaker, you know? That's what um, we need and I mean, being trans and being on film, especially right now, is like a little bit hard to do because people want to tell like the negative sides to the stories and they want to talk about surgery all the time and they want to talk about like all of these things that are so like, um, kind of taboo in, in the trans world right now. And um, Elvira didn't do that. She made a film about me and I happened to be trans in the film. It wasn't focused on me being trans. It focused on this love story. And I think this is the direction 
that the trans community needs to go in. You know, we don't need to focus so much on being trans. We just need to focus on being ourselves and being positive. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's gone. They, they took her. Oh, Alexis, I've been staying up nightly, thinking about the miles and what they'll do to you.